Hi everyone, Timoteus here. By now, it's a well-known fact that the period around the winter solstice was a time of festivities in the Mediterranean region and Europe long before it was Christianized and turned into an event to remember the birth of the Galilean Jew, Jesus, aka Yeshua, of Nazareth. The ancient Egyptians, for example, celebrated the birth of the sky god Horus, aka Hor, around this time. In ancient Greece, the rebirth of Dionysos was celebrated during the rural Dionysia, shortly after the winter solstice. In ancient Rome, Gifts were exchanged and the house was decorated with greenery for the Saturnalia. I dedicated an entire video to this, so I'll put a link in the description in case you'd like to find out more about the Saturnalia. In late Roman times, the cult of the sun god Sol Invictus competed with Christianity for dominance over the winter holiday season. When it comes to the ancients that lived in northern and western Europe, however, it's a lot less clear what they were up to around this time of the year. In Viking Age Scandinavia, there appear to have been Yuletide celebrations, so it's possible that the ancient Scandinavians had celebrations that were similar to the Viking Age ones to a certain extent. For western Europe though, it's almost impossible to tell to what degree they would have followed the Roman Saturnalia, the Germanic proto yuletide celebrations, or perhaps some other local traditions of Celtic or Belgic origin. When it comes to the British Isles specifically, there is one tiny piece of evidence that may tell us something about the local midwinter celebrations in antiquity. Let's have a look at an excerpt from the 8th century work, The Reckoning of Time, originally titled De Temporum Ratione, by the Northumbrian monk Beda Venerabilis. The English people, Beda writes, began the year on December 25th, when we celebrate the birth of the Lord. That very night, which is now sacred to us, they at the time referred to by the gentile word Modranicht, that is, Night of the Mothers, because of, we suspect, the ceremonies they conducted staying up all night. Unfortunately, this is not very much to go on at all. Apparently, Beda wasn't particularly well informed on the matter. He doesn't seem too sure about what he does say either. So we should be careful not to assume that his information is accurate. If what he tells us is true though, the mothers that were honored during the nocturnal ceremonies might be related to the Celtic and Germanic goddesses called the Matronae, or alternatively Matres. It's not clear whether the worship of the Matronae was originally Gaulish or Germanic, but by the Roman period, altars with inscriptions mentioning the Matronae can be found in Roman Germania, Gaul and Britain. Usually, they're not simply addressed by the name Matres or Matronae, but rather by Matres or Matronae, followed by a second element that may refer to a place, tribe, specific function, etc. Some of these appear to be Gaulish or Celtic in origin, whereas others are more likely to be Germanic. We don't have any ancient literature to find out more about the Matres, so the only thing we have are devotional figurines and brief inscriptions and reliefs on altars. The Matronae are depicted sitting in a chair, alone, or in threes. Sometimes they have fruit on their laps, and 
sometimes dogs. Both fruit and dogs suggest that they are thonic fertility deities. Other depictions show them carrying one or two infants. The theme of birth and the start of new life would fit in nicely with other midwinter traditions. Figurines and reliefs produced in the area of modern-day Cologne, once the home of a Germanic tribe called the Ubi, show the matrone with an Ubian bonnet, or perhaps hairdo. Sometimes the lady in the middle has a different hairstyle, but other times all three look the same. In Gaul, however, all three lack this bonnet. And the same goes for the British Isles. If we are right to see a connection between the Night of the Mothers of the British Isles and the Matronae, celebrations in their honor around the winter solstice may have been held in other places where the Matronae were worshipped. That was it for this time folks, don't forget to like this video and feel free to leave me a comment. If you're interested in Roman culture and art, I often post pictures and links on my Facebook page. I'm way more active on there than I am on YouTube in fact, so if you can't wait until my next video, head over to my Facebook page and like or follow me there. Alright, that's all I have to say for now. I hope you all have a lovely end of the year, and um, I'll see you next year. This was Timoteus, thanks for watching.